Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me today is Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar. And General Ravi Shankar and I have not met in, a, I think, four or five weeks' time. And he is, we are back on regular schedule. And General Ravi Shankar is going to talk about Myanmar. What is really going on? What are the stakes involved? $25 billion worth of poppy cultivation drugs? Is that the thing at stake here? I mean, this is a mind-boggling number. So let's welcome General Ravi Shankar and uh, let him lead this conversation. Namaskar, sir. How are you? Namaskar and thanks a lot. It's uh, nice to get back to P Gurus after such a long time. Uh, sir, the pleasure is all ours, sir. Our viewers, our viewers have been looking forward to hearing from you. Viewers, most important thing, you have to like this video. New data is coming out about Myanmar that you have probably not heard anywhere. General has spent some time in this area, so he has first-hand information. If somebody does this, what does he really mean? That sort of nuances, everything will be in front of you. Sir, whenever you would like to start with the slide deck, sir, I'm yeah. just going to listen to the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a story I'm going to spin today through a set of slides. So, yeah. Right. Uh, this is Myanmar. On the left is the complete Myanmar. Um, and if you'll see, it is surrounded by India, China, Thailand, Laos. All right. And uh, all that. And to the south and uh, east is, of course, Andaman, Nepapar. Uh, the right map is the close-up of the area. You'll see one. You see this state of Shan, which is in dark brown to the east, which borders, uh, you know, China. That's the most interesting state. And today I'm not going to talk of Manipur and all. We'll talk of Manipur in the end. That's the interesting state. We'll talk most of that. Okay, but to put it in context, Myanmar is on the right. There are four states of us which have borders with Myanmar. From the north, Arunachal Pradesh in yellow, Nagaland in blue, Manipur in green, and Mizoram in, again, a brownish color. Combined, this is 1,600 kilometers of pure jungle, unadulterated jungle. So when people uh, say, oh, fence the border, okay, you can fence the border. And you a chap will go across the trees on the top because the border can be only 5, 10 feet high. Trees here grow up to 50, 60 feet. Right? And when you walk on these jungles, you can't see the next guy ahead. It's such thin jungle. So, you know, one has to uh, take it with a lot of salt. <laughs> okay. Let's, you know, Myanmar. I heard, read this somewhere. I thought it might interest all of you. The problem with Myanmar is that it has a queen and a king, but they're not married to each other. Okay. <laughs> Very, very interesting. Someone made this observation. It's not my original thing, but yeah. The second thing in Myanmar, which is a true, the Tatmadaw, Tatmadaw is the Myanmar army, is not the problem, but is part of every any solution, any and every solution. Aung San Suu Kyi or democracy is not the solution, but is the part of all the problem. You see how it is. There is no solution, there is no problem in Myanmar. Everyone is part of a solution and a problem together. <clears throat> so, it's a very complicated state if you don't understand it. Uh, I'm not going to go into the composition of the state. By and large, most of them are, you know, tribals, except the Bamars or the Burmese, as we knew them earlier, who are the hill, uh, you know, plainsmen. The rest, everything is all you know, hillsmen, tribes, complete tribes. So I'm not getting into it. it. It's something like our Northeast. Look at the resources. I mean, the resources are phenomenal. Gas, oil, you know, uh, renewable water sources, three major rivers, Irrawaddy and uh, what's that? Uh, I'm forgetting it. Main, main. Mekong, Mekong, Mekong. Me Oh, Mekong goes to Cambodia. The other one, I'm, that's Salween. Salween. Salween comes from the Tibeto Plateau. Okay. And, uh, right, Arakonyama. Oh, fertile lands. Lot of hydropower. Forest cover. 50% of the land area is forest power, uh, land. And 90% of rubies, the world's rubies, come from Myanmar. And interestingly, 
it is firmly under the control of Tatmadaw. Complete. Okay. And Myanmar, over and above this, is also the main source of drugs in the infamous gold, Golden Triangle. So, if you look at the Myanmar economy, 50% is its resources, natural resources, which it has. The other 50% is somewhere, I mean, I would say drugs. This The first 50% is with the army. So, the army, you have to understand in Myanmar, is economically strong. In the other 50%, the drugs, it has got another 50% hold. It's got a very strong hold. The stakes are very high. Okay. And the every, everything in Myanmar is, you know, pretty, uh, it's a very uh, completely controlled by the army. Okay. As simple as that. Right. Now, you look at the left, that's the golden triangle, which I've put in the map. Those dark brown areas are the places where poppy is grown well. <clears throat> Sometime back, poppy was the main cultivation in this crop and heroin was the main you know, trade in this area. Okay, there's nothing except jungles and water out there. Okay, now what happened, You'll, I, I'm going to take you to Afghanistan. When Obama went into Afghanistan and the Yanks went into Afghanistan, uh, for the 20 years they stayed in Afghanistan, you'll be surprised. The poppy cultivation there quadrupled. Right? Here I only said doubled soon after the invasion. But by the time the Americans left Afghanistan in 2021, the poppy cultivation had quadrupled in uh, Afghanistan. As a result, the poppy cultivation in Myanmar flopped. Poppy cultivation... I mean, there's a glut of poppy and heroin in the uh, drug market. So, this stopped. But the Myanmaris were very smart. What they did was they shifted to meta, methamphetamine. It's called meth, right? It is easier to produce, right? And uh, the meth, Myanmaris mastered this. And where do they, and they got chemicals. You need a lot of chemicals to make this meth tablets. Now, where do these tablets come, uh, uh, chemicals come from? It comes from China and India. Sourcing is both. This is the funny part, you know, and it's not the funny part. There's the part you have to understand. This entire industry was set up by the Chinese drug cartels. Okay. Now, and this became the biggest source of meth in the world. And the economy of this is about $10 billion. And this Shan state, which I said earlier, which is this dark brown area of the Golden Triangle, Myanmar, that is where meth is made and produced in quantity. If you look at the Golden Triangle itself, 70% of the you know, uh, area is Myanmar. Now, when the chemicals came from China and Manipur, Manipur especially, not Nagaland, not uh, Mizoram, Manipur, because Manipur is the road, you know, Imphal, uh, you know, Mandalay, it goes down to Napida. That's the main road. That's the alignment uh, of the trilateral highway, which is to go east. That connect up to Thailand. That's how the connections are. So, through these roads, existing roads, uh, chemicals came from China and Manipur. Everyone thinks there is a problem between Methi and Kukis, which is ethnic and religious and all, all poppy and talk. Now, the thing is very simple. The Methis, the Methi underground groups, were the ones who were getting all the chemicals for these Myanmar uh, drug cartels from India. They were helped by the cookies. So, they are drug runners basically, all these chaps. <clears throat> now, as they do the, did the drug running, they realized, oh, the temperature, the area, everything is the same in our area, in you know southern Manipur. So the cookies started cultivating poppy and a parallel heroin trade started. And this bungling was done by who? 
methi groups so they were someone who was doing the agriculture then someone who was doing the transportation very clear <clears throat> okay now this didn't happen overnight remember i am talking of the period from 2000 to 2022 two decades and in myanmar this transition from poppy economy to the meth economy saw a lot of drug wars ethnic conflicts war civil wars etc etc except at that time no one bothered from 2005 to 2015 the very ethnic groups which are involved today with the army were fighting with the uh, army so this whatever is happening in myanmar is not new this is the third or the fourth round of their warfare due to every war in this area civil war has been triggered it has been triggered by a change in the drug economy whenever the drug economy changes there is a eruption and a war and then once everyone knows his territory the cuts are settled everything settles till the next eruption so what is going on today is the eruption okay now we'll examine this further you look at this this was the production of opm in uh, afghanistan finally when the taliban came to power they banned opm so what happened 99% of opm was eradicated from afghanistan it has been eradicated in 22 it it so it was only 5% 23 it's almost 0% anyone who grows opm in afghanistan the taliban takes care so what happened what happened was complete opm uh, poppy cultivation came back in shan state when this it came back in this uh, thing right in 2021 22 22 basically the poppy cultivation shot up by 33% the estimates for 2023 are it will shoot up by 88% the regional market for heroin as of now is valued at 10 billion dollars and growing the meth market was 15 billion dollars so that is 25 billion dollars so 25 billion dollar bhai kisi ko palle mein nahi padega kisko pata what is 25 billion dollars right now here comes the understanding the complete cpc china pakistan economic corridor ab, ab, about which we spoke so much all of us have spoken so much about the stupid corridor you know how much pakistan uh, china has invested or given as loans to pakistan or whatever you call it complete investment into cpc so far in the 3 years or 4 years or uh, from 2017 to today 7 years the investment is 21 billion dollars in just one year the output here has lapped what is invest being invested in uh, what was invested in cpc between china and pakistan over 7 years that is the kind of money which is there okay now look at the flip side ever since this tatmadaw came into power there has been a economic contraction everything has broken that is no doubt or on about this ukraine war so which means inflation has gone up worldwide everything in myanmar has gone uh, crazily uh, costly as a result what do people do people became impoverished impoverished so if people have become impoverished then everyone is into the drug economy now the golden triangle is returning to its roots of poppy cultivation and also expanding the outside synthetic drug economy why technology technology and technology agricultural technology ai and things like that i mean they are top of the thing so it's a double bonanza for the drug cartel uh, cartels so all fighting for turfs and expanding is for the expanding drug why no one is interested in drug in the democracy so uh, srirg till now if you have any questions ask otherwise i'll take it forward um general ravishankar 
if 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 it's all about drugs and if india has successfully eradicated all the drug plantations inside its borders then why is there a flare up in manipur sir because the drugs are being done somewhere else yeah we'll come to that we'll come to that you have a very valid question we'll come to that drugs have been well eradicated without an alternative and the alternative is not you know good enough it's not attractive enough right only poppy cultivation has been eradicated not meth I'll, I'll answer this question. Wait till the end and then you ask me this question again. Right? And mind you, the answer to this question of yours came out today in the print by written by my friend Sehashish Alex Phillips. I have shown it. I've got this thing in the end. We'll talk about it. Very interesting. Okay. Right. Look at this. Today, Assam Rifles have seized I mean, the article is today, it might have come, the whole story would have been played out five, ten days back. 9,000 Yaba tablets, also known as the crazy pill, worth of 13, worth 13.5 crores in Manipur. Just one bag, one sack. This much is 13.5 crores. Can you imagine? One pill of this, one pill of this, okay, is 5,000 bucks in Bangalore. You can imagine. What is Yaba? Yaba is meth with caffeine. And you get it in various flavors. You get it in coffee flavor, you get it in vanilla flavor, you get it in the flavor you want. And you can order for it. So now you've got the answer. Why poppy, poppy cultivation to hell with it? This is there. And when the whole heat comes goes down, the poppy will come up again 10 years later or 5 years later. So you and this you uh, I would suggest everyone open this. It's today. Today only I saw. Snehashish today only tweeted this out. So have a look at it. And he'll he's he's very colorfully put it out what it is. What he doesn't know, what he has not put out is the earlier part. The earlier part, the two slides which I put, is my investigation. My research. Okay. <clears throat> now you look at this. You look at the opium yields and you know Myanmar. Whenever there was a perturbation in Afghanistan, yields have gone up here or down, right? You look at the right end, 2020, 20, 21, 22, how it has gone up. So you have an absolute drug issue. Now, now we'll come to the civil war. Now we'll connect the two. What is happening, you know, understand. Generally, these violet dots are the places where this civil war is taking place. Rebel, all that, whatever uh, you've heard. Where the maximum concentration is there, you know, where I've written Operation 1027. What is 1027? It started on 27th October, uh, 10 October, 27th date, last year. That is Shan state, and that is where and it's there down below Shan state. But that is where all these drug cartels operate in the most uh, well good poppy area. <laughs> There's a three brotherhood alliance. It consists of the Arakan Army, Myanmar National Democratic Alliance, and Tang National Liberation Army. They are fighting against uh, the Tatmadaw. What are they fighting for? They are fighting against the Tatmadaw together. Arakan army, incidentally, is in the, based in the Rakhine state on the left corner, which I have said. They are going and fighting there. Why? It's all about drugs. They want their share of drugs. They don't want these drugs to go. They want their cut, outsize kite, cut, size of, cut of the economy. Okay. The NUG or this National Unity Government of, um, uh, you know, Aung San Suu Kyi and all. They went and spoke to these uh, uh, three brotherhood alliance. So far, you name one, show me any one of you, one article or one report where the three brotherhood alliance has spoken of democracy. You will not find it. Okay. They don't support any democracy, democracy and all that nonsense. It's an out and out money making system. To the right and bottom. 
you see this operation 1107 1107 is what 7th november it started who started it it is some Karenini people's liberation front they have started another front with uh, three four armies which face thailand because some part of Popa is grown there also then you have opposite in india in the sagaing and chin states Sagang is opposite Manimur, Chin is opposite uh, Mizoram. There you have Kachin Independence Army, Kawalin People's Defense Force, and the Arakan Army, and of course the Arakan Army. So all this is happening, right? No one has spoken of independence in Myanmar. Now, what is the connection with uh, our groups? The <coughs> Chin groups or our cookie groups. They are who are Kuki Chin, Zo. These are all the same kind of people. These three are aligned with the rebel groups in Myanmar because they are also Kuki and Chin groups, basically. Okay. So ethnically, they are aligned with them. The uh, Manipuri groups, okay, the Manipuri groups or the Methi groups, right? UN, Ilwe, all those nonsense. Uh, they are all with the Tatma Dao. So they are fighting, they are helping each other opposite. Now, when this, in the past four or five months, whenever there is an eruption of violence in Myanmar, these fellows get their friends from across. So it's a free for all out there going on in some manner. Of course, now things are stabilized. There's a front, there's a buffer zone, and all. We'll come to it in the end. After we finish off with understanding Myanmar. Okay. Now, I let me go back into the history of Myanmar. You see, the Communist Party, when it came to power in China, they drove the Kuomintang off into the Shan state. Right. And then, uh, you know, now uh, the Chinese formed the Communist Party of Burma. They supported them to sort out Kuomintang. So, China in that last century instigated some kind of a civil war in Burma, for which the, uh, you know, the then uh, ruler, basically Aung San Suu Kyi's father, he reacted and he actually decimated the Communist Party of, uh, you know, Burma. So this whole story has been going on. So, and then there's, because there's so much drugs, everything out there, there are a lot of, uh, Gambling and casinos, and drug trade, and abductions, and all that criminal criminality has started in the southern part of China, Yunnan province, bordering Myanmar on that side. So those fellows come here, okay, and abductions, all this happens, and for them, their adda is Shan, and from here. Drugs go into China and wherever, and of course they come to India. Now we'll, we, are, I'm now talking of China only. So what is the range of operations? Drug smuggling, brothels, casinos, telecom scans, online gambling, cyber fraud, human trafficking. Everything happens here, and the Chinese are fed up. Okay, so the Chinese police offer rewards up to seventy to hundred thousand dollars, and Many of the guys who are operating in Shan state are Chinese citizens. There are five powerful families which control most of the criminal activity in Kokang, which is in a region, the northern, the bordering region of China in Shan state. You know, the mafia, the original mafia has a lot to learn from these people. You know, when they come from Italy, they must be taking pre-course training here as to how to do all this. I mean, this is original, which we really don't know. Okay. Now, <laughs> this is the CMEC, China Myanmar Economic Corridor. All these points where activity China is doing in Myanmar. They want this port at Kyakfu, and then they want all these roads, all the nonsense. Everyone thinks Myanmar, China is having a ball with this BRI into Myanmar. But the truth is something different. It, they are doing something, but the truth is different. Now, if fighting escalates in this area, which it is, it the complete movement in the, through this area is affected because the road, the 
jungles are so thick in this area you can only go by a few uh, roads you know my mind goes boy act to this book called by john masters called road past mandalay he that road past mandalay is a, a fantastic book it talks about the japanese war and you know the battle of the admin boxes all that so actually from here one road mandalay is the center point a little uh, north of napida one road goes into india that is to imphal right the other goes road goes into yunnan yunnan highway so the chinese are using this yunnan highway to build their pri okay but it that comes through all these drug cartels and everything so china supports most of these armed groups and pays them also they pay china pays protection money to ensure that the bri is not uh, disturbed but at macro level it needs tatmadaw and the government to put its projects through i mean this is something similar to what's happening in the northeast in our country long from a long time the center or the state makes a project but to execute the project you have to pay the groups off china is doing that the difference between us and them is in our case the army and the police forces and you know uh, the armed forces were there to protect and kick the uh, rebels out or minimize the rebels hold on this there there's no one the Ch- tatmadaw is not interested tatmadaw says you give me money and do your project the rebel group say tell china you pay us the money and we'll let you work so china is prepared to pay because it wants kai kyafu that is the opening for china into uh, the bay of bengal and its two ocean theory okay so china is playing both sides and it has no choice but what does china done china controls all the arms in this area so if you think the china, chinese are this thing no they are as crooked as anyone else right they give arms on an as required basis to each party right each rebel group and they give it through the united wa state army the united wa state army is the remnant or the successor group of the chinese communist party right so you uwsa gives arms to all these people and friendly groups get arms free of cost so it's all graded if you are a front to us uwsa and if china needs your force and it will you will get arms at very less rate otherwise you pay through the nose and this arm smuggling come has found its way into india make no mistake the entire northeast is awash with arms you can buy it like you can buy brinjols in a market and i'm saying this with a lot of authority okay i didn't know this our this uh, market existed and i am now go taking you back to 2007 8 so someone told me look there's a lot of chinese arms floating in the market you can buy i said look can you buy he said yes sir give me 10000 rupees and i'll get you a weapon so i gave a chap 10000 rupees two days later he came back to me with the chinese weapon i asked him where did you get it he said sir i bought it from the vegetable market this is the truth <coughs> okay so that is the reality we have to live in reality not live in some uh, thing so this is what the chinese story is right now the chinese are worried about all this nonsense which is happening so they are doing this live drills this all this all news reports from china now i am showing you they are right uh, they are tightening up their borders they don't want to spill over into their area but they don't want to enter myanmar also so the pla has been there other side in strength for quite some time but they ensure they don't fire one this thing so they don't want to get involved so my in the way i look at it pla is damn scared and yellow to the core they don't get involved with any fighting china is only doing bribing out there okay right so now china is trying to say okay let's have uh, border security peace a wo everyone claims victory every second day there okay and then but then myanmar this is what they want they want the bay of bengal deep water port in kyakhyu 
so that they enter the indian ocean the moment they enter the indian ocean i'll i'll take you back to the map just look at this map the moment they enter the indian ocean the malacca dilemma, dilemma is the malacca strait dilemma is broken because they are now in bay of bengal straight 200 kilometers of road they hope that by the time this deep water uh, port comes up and everything stabilizes they would have bribed their way and you know they'll keep bribing their way for things to go up and down they have a larger pl- game plan but that game plan so far has not succeeded it might not succeed also that's my assessment okay so well uh why for the simple reason before that china might not even exist in the form it is the way things are happening in china but that is a thing which to all viewers i am telling you today today tomorrow self and general rajiv narayanan are going to examine if china is collapsing or not okay whether you are in p gurus or you are part of gunner shot listener who are on to this tomorrow you want to hear an interesting take on the collapse of china rajiv and i are going to discuss because and our approach is very simple he is going to give a presentation i am going to give a presentation and then we are going to compare notes i don't know what he is thinking i i know what i am thinking that's the way we are doing it absolutely blind okay <clears throat> then of course they want this deep water port and all this nonsense now china is unlikely if look at this china everyone says oh china is going to put this janta down and all it can't it doesn't have the capability to do so china unlikely to pull the carpet on janta and accept resistance groups all your branch so why you one has to understand this also then the all these these are not resistance groups these are all uh, ethnic uh, armies they are ethnic armies who are dominant in their areas with the money they have they are protecting their turf they don't have the capability to go and rule myanmar nor will they be acceptable it is something like you know maithis and nagas and kukis in manipur no one is acceptable to the other so if maithis nagas and kukis are not acceptable to each other how can all these kachins and karens and all these people be acceptable to each other to rule uh, myanmar it has to be the myanmar army only bamars who are the um, uh, you know majority and who control the rest of the economy who control the ports everything and they have a network and it's a organized army with fighters navy everything and they're pretty strong you know and there incidentally the tatmado or the myanmar army does not have its own weapons it doesn't have chinese weapons it has russian weapons russian tanks and russian frigates so one has to understand even they are very clear they want to play off russia against china china against india india against russia so that's another game which is going on it is a very complicated state i mean people don't understand we just talk oh get democracy in yank will say get democracy in democracy has got no value in myanmar it will never have value for the past 75 years it has not had a value it will not have value ahead right <clears throat> okay so Three years after the coup, is the clock finally running out? How will it run out? Because China can't pull the rug out under the Janta's feet. So nothing is going to happen. Everything is going to be the same. Okay. Okay. China brokers cease fire. So you see Chinese press. One newspaper, uh, South China Morning Post. It's given you five versions of the story. China for Janta. China against Janta. China for rebels. China against rebels. they are also confused their importance is coming through in these five six i mean i very purposefully took these out because each headline gives you a different story okay well, what is what is this complete story all about it's for drug revenues there's no talk of democracy there's no opposition unity all groups are based on tribes all have their interests no unity tan pandav is well organized and well funded through all sources it does not want other centers of power to become too big every article you read on this whole story will say oh this is likely but you know uh, tatmada is very strong it's not easy to this thing it has weathered far worse problem china has its own problems it does not want to get into myanmar and fight in difficult terrain and the problem will endure okay now let's come to india now of course i've shown you this so this is the cake 
between the Metis and this is how it, the whole start, thing started in Myanmar. Uh, people have to understand. Why did this whole problem start? It is not any ethnic rivalry. Suddenly, the, the Metis and the uh, Kukis, right? And of course, I won't say that common Metis and the common Kukis, but all these groups and all the armies which float around in the Northeast. Every street corner has an army. Four chaps form an army, right? One chap goes down, it becomes a group, resistance group. <coughs> So that's how it is in the oh, Northeast. Four is an army, three is a group. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. And you know, and everyone wants autonomy or independence or anything, whatever comes to his mind, he'll talk. Right? And anyone who knows how to draw a flag, he'll have a flag and tomorrow it's up. But you know, everything was in balance. Everyone was having their cut and everything. When the poppy economy started, when the poppy economy started, Till the time it was only chemical supply to Myanmar, things were stable. In fact, Manipur was reforming. But I think you meant Poppy... Manipur, sir. Chemical, sir, sir, sir. I think you meant chemical supply through Manipur. Yeah, yeah, through Manipur. Manipur okay. to Myanmar. Sorry, yeah, My, Manipur to Myanmar. By both these groups, both these, both the Skuki groups and the Maiti groups, both both are involved in it. Let's be very clear. Okay, there's no one. Dud ka dula ka koi nahi hai. <laughs> uh, right, that was <laughs> okay. So, when the Metis, sorry, the cookies started cultivating poppy because cookies are in the hill areas and poppy is grown in the hill areas, not in the valleys. These poor Metis fellows who are in the uh, uh, valleys they saw, oh, those chaps are making money out of poppy cultivation, then they started hungering for land. Suddenly they said, oh, we need land. Why do they need land in the hills to grow poppy? I mean, you see the connect. You think poppy will, uh, you know, in the hills you grow uh, rice. You can't grow. Those hills don't grow rice. You can grow fruits out there. But all the militants in that area have grown, stopped the, you know, completely eradicated the orange cultivations there. That area has some of the best oranges in the world, incidentally. Not many people know it. Okay. They stopped everything. The government of India, I mean, you can keep cursing the Congress government. But let me tell you what the Congress government did. They promoted orange cultivation. They put up factories for orange extraction. So that the whole circle is there. All these militants went and closed it. Okay. And they, now they have replaced it with poppy. Where your oranges grow, poppies also grows well. That, you know, these are all uh, terrain factors. So now the ethnic rift started in uh, Manipur. Land. And then XYZ. Then it became Hindu. It became, you know, all this nonsense which we've been talking of. But the fundamental problem is this. Okay. You look at this. This orange, uh, the gray part is where generally is the valley area. And this is where the Metis are concentrated. The green part is generally where the cookies are and the yellow part is where the Nagas are. So far, the Nagas have not come into the story. Don't think the Nagas are not involved in drug running. They are also involved in it. But for some reason, this problem has sprung up between cookies and methis. Okay. Now it has taken a different turn. That's a different story. You see, this is the uh, dialect there. Now what's happening there now? Now there is a clear divide between Kuki area and uh, um, uh, Methi area, one can't transgress the other. If they transgress, firing starts. The Manipur police tried to get into the Kuki areas, they get ambushed. Then once that something like that happens, some flare-up takes place in uh, you know Imphal. Then this Arambai Tengol, they have come into the loop. Today, now from being a civil organization or a civil group. Now, they have now become almost a militant group. The other day in Kangla Fort, which is the heart of Imphal, okay, they caught hold of all MLS and they said, you take an oath as per Aramboy Tengol. That you will uphold Miti rights, Yevo, etc. But then we don't know what the uh, this oath is. This Reading that oath will be interesting. I am waiting for someone to send it to me. It will come. Okay. And that I'm sure that some parts of it will be against the uh, you know constitution and the allegiance to India. And 
you find that all these revered MLAs and MPs and all are bowing down to that. And it is happening right in Kangla Fort. So what is this government doing? And the same chief minister under whom this Manipur state has existed now for nine months in this strife from May to now. Okay. Has he improved the situation? No. Then why is he continuing? It's a question, big question. It's nice to construct Ram Mandir. But how is it that the same people are not getting peace into this area? And this is the area where Arjun went historically into this Manipur area. Those of you who know Ar Mahabharat, who read Mahabharat, please read. He went there, Arjun went there. And this Manipuri dance is absolutely based on, you know, or classical dancers of the year. Or the or today you want to fence that area. When you fence the area, you can you are stopping something called the free movement regime, which is a thing between the tribes that they can go 15 kilometers either side, they can carry a head load, they can marry across. So the moment the announcement has been made that we'll make a fence, the Nagas are up in arms, the Metis are up in arms, or not, not maybe the Metis, the Kukis are up in arms, and the Mizos are up in arms. And then there's an overflow from there to here. People are coming here. And then they're being handed back. So it's become a muddle. But at the end of the day, you, you, you I showed you that thing, no? Yeah. I showed you this. Yeah. This is not stopping. This is increasing. This is increasing. It is like water flowing under the bridge. I mean... The way I look at it, this, this drug economy is like the Saraswati river which is flowing underneath. It will surface <laughs> at the bottom. It has gone underneath. Everyone knows it. So, I mean, at some point of time, I think all of us have to, all of us, I, I, me included, I am the only guy who talks like this. Get me another guy who talks like what I have spoken today. Okay. And... <clears throat> You look at this, we are talking of also Naga area there. You also, the Naga areas are there. Now, any day now, if that uh, fence comes up, the Naga limb issue will go, come up. And Nagas are either side, on other side in Myanmar and our side. And they want a greater Naga land which encompasses half of Manipur. Who will appease them if that goes into flames? If you think some... Uh, you know, treaty or something which we have signed with this NSC and AM works, it will not work. For 75 years, it's not worked. It will not work for the next 75 years if we don't use our sense. No, Kuki, Zo, Chin, Mar. These are, uh, you know, all the same tribes. They exist in south of Manipur and into Mizoram. And Mizoram is already in problems now. Slowly. So... It leaves Metis in this in-between in belt, which means split of Manipur. Are you prepared to accept all this? So you have a problem. China has a problem. The good thing about this whole story is China has a problem. They can't make headway. They can't. They are fingering this issue, but they can do only this much. So if I were anyone in the government of India, I will say, you know, use these all these groups to go and finger China. The way they are fingering you. You must. I mean, very simple. Only then. Maybe that's China what is happening, sir. Maybe that is we what is know. happening. We don't know. I don't know. I, all I'm saying is I'm giving free advice. See, in, a, in any <laughs> channel like this, I can give free advice, which I'm giving. So we should. Why, why spare them? Right. So, I think we need to have... Yeah, we, I think the, uh, this was the last slide. We, like, yeah, we're done with the slides, Sachin. You can take it off. Um, thank you. General so, Ravishankar. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's your question. I'm open to questions. Yeah, yeah. The, the only question so, that I had was, uh, I think you've answered that question. It's all drugs. We've been saying this also through various people. The unfortunate outcome of all this stuff is, is this going to be continuing even post the 2024 elections? Uh, and, and is that uh, because it's all about drugs? Yeah. Why will it not continue? It can't, I Look, 
let me be very honest with you i commanded a brigade here in this area next to it in a place called haflong which is actually the 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 epicenter of all activities in northeast is haflong anyone who knows uh, that area will tell you that and i was sitting right in the center and i dealt with all kinds of problems out there bangladeshi groups uh, chinese uh, not chinese groups uh, the manipuri groups uh, ulfa the words muslim everything there there some muslim groups also there right it's a very interesting place drugs everything we knew drug running was going on we knew arms thing was going on we were getting good catches we are lord my chaps were on the road 24 by 7 but we still knew 80% was awaiting us but in 2006 7 the volumes were not so much and the costs were not so much today we are talking of some astronomical number now instead of solving the major problem you are into a political game you are fighting for something else so as a result you this water is flowing under like saraswati right so how why will it stop because it suits every party there unless you have a major economic plan which can wean away people from this economy i've already told you what uh, happened in the you know orange cultivation and its destruction i uh, let, me, let me narrate a story anecdotally you know one day, there's a place called hangroom which is in my area of responsibility so one guy came from there and one gaon buda came from there and gave me a basket of oranges so i took it you know you don't refuse him i gave him some ram sham and you know, what he wanted i sent him i tasted the oranges oh fantastic then i asked where do you get these oranges he says so this entire belt is oranges and these oranges are go on in three parallel ranges which go into manipur and then beyond the manipur valley so i said yeah this is a great thing why doesn't someone put up a factory out here and you know have pulp and you know so many things can be done orange juice and all so next day the dc there said sir come with me i'll take you he took me and mind you that place that factory was 1 km from my where i was staying and every day i used to pass by that i never I never saw it because weeds had grown over it the entrance was locked i always thought some gate for no way when i opened there was a full factory lying with absolute packing equipment state of the art i'm talking up to 2007 2006 why the other economies were stronger than the legit economy so you need to have political will you need to have unity of people and ensure that the legitimate economy and development where people can study they know i mean we talk you know everyone talks as if uh, all those people are waiting that you know you will come and educate them we people should understand the complete hindi books and the library in uh, infal were burned long back hindi movies are were banned in infal when i was there in 2006 2007 i don't think it has changed so far right so they had there's a different story which is happening out there which we should understand you need to get education out there and you need to do so many things and they are very intelligent people they are sportsmen like maricom sanmacha birender or hockey player all these fellows are from there manipuris absolutely talented why are we not using them why are we not putting up sports facilities out there instead of dividing people we should integrate them make them play make them you know get into education take the aggression out on the sport <laughs> yeah no i'll give you something else you go anywhere in chennai okay uh, there are a lot of these uh, fancy saloons which have come up chain of saloons hair cutting styling and all 50 to 60% of the staff i'm sure it's in bangalore and you know pune and all this 50 to 60% of these staff are from northeast i go and talk to them where are you from sir i'm from more so i talk to them a little about more he is very happy right now 
they come here and when i ask what do you do so there's no nokri there they come here they are disciplined they intelligent they do a fantastic job cooks so many cooks are from that area nurses youth in that area don't have a place to study they don't have a place to prosper they have to come far away in Tam- in tamil nadu and uh, bangalore and such places to prosper you will be surprised half or more than half of them know fantastic tamil you talk to him in hindi he'll talk to you in tamil you know we have missed the trick completely i i don't mind saying it in any forum i have said this on the first day when i had a video on this in gana shot all those people who are watching from gana shot will answer this will watch for it right yeah so we'll take on questions i don't mind even if it, uh, any amount of time because actually my heart is in that area general ravi shankar i think i unfortunately we can't take questions i have another yeah, yeah, uh, organized program in about half an hour yeah yeah no problem. i need to give some break so i yeah, think yeah, we've yeah. covered a lot of information new perspective and and this is something that you know people may want to watch more than one general i did not interrupt the general because the story was so fascinating and he has pulled in all these things one last question sir how do the chinese write a date date for what i'm writing let us say the chinese general is writing a letter to his troops you put a date right at the beginning format okay. is it year first day then month or how is the format like china i don't know the chinese themselves must be knowing it i really don't know <laughs> the reason i ask general ravi shankar uh-huh. is because operation 1027 operation ah, that's uh, that they, sounds american listen. sir that is sounds uh, american yeah. at the american. same time a chinese could be doing that to just confuse people to think that this is actually american work <laughs> no 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 the chinese also think like american they have copied everything from america no? so you think their their format also is month and then uh, ah, yeah, yeah yeah they they look china there's nothing original everything is copied so <laughs> thank you so much general ravi shankar viewers you have to like this video and please subscribe to gunner shot because he is working now almost one video a day by himself he's doing all the editing he's doing all sorts of stuff his thumbnail thumbnails are fantastic and and it's very different hatke hai you need to understand where general is coming from you need to elevate our thinking to listen to what <laughs> no, he is trying okay, to say okay. <laughs> yeah so very and, very and, fascinating stuff yeah and someone said troll half long is karbi anglong district that fellow doesn't know where karbi anglong is where the half long is okay half long uh-huh. is dimasa dimasa hasau district and karbi anglong east and karbi anglong west are two different districts look guys I spent a lot of time in the east. I know every chappa chappa out there. Okay, the, yeah, you have to take out your map and see. There's a chap called yes, Troll. Yes. That's what he said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. I didn't even look at the uh, the com- comments going on because I know people are trolling. You know, no point in trying to. They, no, everybody okay, wants to try feel good. So yeah, there yeah, is an organization. Good. There's an organization that some of the Soros gangs have started in US called NAMTA, North American. Okay. Manipur Tribals Association doesn't have mates. It's everybody else. That's when you know that somebody has a you know. No, no. See, all these will happen. No, you have stirred the pot here. The ripples will be felt all over. Well, that you have to. You okay. have to have a good political solution for this whole story. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, General Ravi Shankar. Viewers, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar. Namaskar thank you